Which way do we go? Good morning, all the participants. We have with us our speaker for today's session, Dr. Vijay Pal Singh, sir. Uh, sir, I can see you. Uh, your video is available. Uh, sir, uh, your voice is not audible. Sir, your voice is not audible. Uh, please check your microphone. Uh, it's on mute mode. The bar in between. Yes. Can you see now? Yes, sir. And about PPT, can you see the PPT? Uh, not now. Sir, uh, you have to present, you have to share your PPT first. Yeah, Add so I'm going to pre Add, huh, present now. Present your entire screen. Yes, sir. And, and share. Somehow it is not clicking. It wants to share the entire screen. Repeat sir, you have to click on the uh, screen, the pop up window. Just click on the screen. And then yeah. the share button will be highlighted. Can you see now? Uh, yes, it's now opening. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, sir, just keep it on full screen mode. Yes. And sir, uh, please hide that bar which is coming. Uh, asking to yeah. share. Done. Yeah, perfect, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> now, may I ask all the participants to please put their mic and camera on off mode, mute your mic, put off your camera. We have with us Dr. Vijay Pal Singh. He's joint director at Food Safety and Standard Authority of India, Government of India. Dr. Singh did his PhD from University of Pune in Metabolomic Syndrome and Asthma. He was serving as veterinarian surgeon at Sanjay Gandhi Animal Care Center. He was veterinary officer at Government of Rajasthan and then at IGBI, IGIB CSIR New Delhi. He served as assistant professor in Academy of Scientific and Innovative Research at IGIB New Delhi. His expertise is in social and behavior change, animal ethics, animal welfare, dairy husbandry and milk processing. Currently, he is working on food safety, antimicrobial resistance, veterinary drug residue, quality assurance, and good lab practices. Dr. Vijaypal Singh, sir, will be delivering his lecture on design of animal experiment, welfare, and necessities. I welcome you, sir, again. Over to you, sir. Sir, you can start your presentation now. Okay, good morning everyone and first of all I would like to thank uh, Professor Anjali Avasti and uh, Dr. Kumud for giving me the opportunity to interact with you all people from the Rajasthan University and from other universities. And today my talk is about design of animal experiment, welfare and necessity. As the series of this webinar uh, is on basically the molecular techniques and you might have studied about the protein, proteomics and all. So I want to focus and tell you that we are doing most of our research perfectly, very good. But when it comes to translation to the human, you have to do animal experiment. And while doing animal experiment, we sometimes become casual and we don't do the way it is to be done. So I will today focus on experimental design 
and how your experimental design can affect your molecular chain which will ultimately lead to the non translatable or non reproducible data so the let's start with first so basically i want mean, to start with the first this the brain is a wonderful organ created by god and it start working as soon as you wake up but we don't have a classroom it stop as soon as you enter the lecture hall so those of you i may not see you i cannot see you all because i am i have full screen with the ppt so please don't go away because there will be exam after and some a few questions will be there which will be very tricky after this presentation and you can very well ask me the question after this after this presentation and anything that you would like to suggest so be with me uh, mentally first what is an animal experiment uh dr anjali just want to confirm can you hear me clearly is it yes, okay yes sir yes sir we can hear okay. you perfect okay if anything goes wrong just tell me because sure. i i can i cannot say anything sure sure sir what is, what is an animal experiment basically animal experiment what do you qualify to call an animal experiment is that one which is done on performed on living vertebrate living is important here if you are doing something on the tissue which is brought from the slaughter house it is not living if you are doing on non vertebrate like if you are doing experiment on drosophila that it is not an animal experiment because drosophila is not a vertebrate it does not require any clearance from any lived ethics committee second thing it cause some some distress or suffering to the animal even suppose if you are just taking a little bit of blood from the animal for their health monitoring not for some of your experiment it is not causing much suffering hands in such cases this experiment will not be called as animal experiment is done for certain purpose very very important why it is important that you have to justify when you are doing an experiment what is the purpose and purpose cannot be your master degree purpose cannot be your phd degree purpose cannot be that you want to gain a skill purpose is that you are going to solve a societal problem and the harm that is caused to the animal because of experiment is much less than the benefit which you will get so you have to first find out the harm and benefit analysis out of it so three components perform on living vertebrate cause some distress or suffering to animal and is done for certain purpose now coming to the welfare you might be hearing this word welfare a lot and welfare is most of the time is being considered in our country as a wrong connotation that you are going to get something in free like for ministry of farmer welfare means they will get something free some urea some uh, some kind of a subsidy or whatever but welfare is a scientific term okay and what is welfare welfare of an individual is its state as regard its attempt to cope with an environment means if you are put up in a some environment whether you can cope whether you can survive or you don't survive like we are all house we are blocked down into our house so we are living in a condition we sometimes can cope or we don't cope then we will have a problem we will have the mental issue we will have depression if we can cope we can survive and we can get fit we can live happily so you put animal in certain condition whether animal can cope can survive or don't cope don't commit don't survive when they feel bad about it. welfare another issue that you sometimes say the universities set up or sometimes in pharmacy college that we are providing air condition we are providing feed then water what else you want for animal so the welfare is having on copy is having control both mentally and bodily i want to quote you example that if suppose i am be put in a jail i will get everything but i will what i will not get is the mental freedom so this component of animal to get mental freedom is always missing most of the time <clears throat> sorry and how can you provide that mental freeness and mental control suppose you have to enter to the mind of the animal what animal really want like if you have a mouse what mouse want they want to dig they always want to chew they always want to clean themselves so for that you have to provide the tissue paper 
or in the in the gaze of the animals so that they can make something they have something to do and they can say have a mental control so bodily control is something like they can eat they can do this and that but mental control is a, like they can also do something out welfare mm-hmm. always refer to the live animal and including humans and it is the characteristic of a individual animal if animal is dead then there is no welfare welfare <coughs> sorry welfare including suffering are a part of it when we call welfare it is not a charity welfare means even if you are a non vegetarian you want to eat chicken welfare means how the chicken is grown how the chicken is being transported how the chicken is being slaughtered and like that if you are doing experiment welfare means how the animal are kept how the animal are treated how the animal are being relieved from the pain that is the welfare and welfare is extremely important for the animal experiment and that i am going to do animal protection and animal welfare is different animal welfare is the characteristic of the individual whereas the protection is something human do to them i give something to humans so we show to the animal and i protect animal that is not welfare welfare is something what we give what they need and every animal need is different how this different suppose if you take a pig what they want they always want to go to the mud and they want to root if you take the chicken chicken want to roost and they want to fly if you go to the mouse mouse want to dig the hole so every animal need is different and what we always feel for humans human always feel whatever we are providing whatever is good for human is always good for animal this is most useless idea no whatever is good for us is not good for animal animal have their own need animals have have their own requirement and we cannot say what is good for us is good for them coming to the value of animal extrinsic and intrinsic when you call the extrinsic value is what are we going to get from animal like from the buffalo we get milk from the animal experiments with the lab animal which are in your lab what we will get we will get data we will get blood we will get tissue out of that what we will collect we will collect that data so that is the in extrinsic value extrinsic value is our phd data we will get from that or our master data and that extrinsic value will only be good when the intrinsic value you will provide and what is the intrinsic value intrinsic value is the value of animal intrinsic value of which apal singh is intrinsic value of my value and nobody can reduce and nobody can increase my value intrinsic value is always fixed intrinsic value is my inherent worth and it excludes utility utility means something which i give out or some animal something gives out like food like data your milk your your leather your meat and all this one that is extrinsic intrinsic is what is their inherent worth if you cannot give the intrinsic value good to the animal extrinsic value can never be good so if you will not provide me the good housing good conditions good food very good means outside conditions i will not perform well if you want your employee if you want your student to perform well you have to always provide intrinsic value good then only they will provide their best hence if you house a case house a animal in your case remember to provide what they want so that they will provide you the data which is reproducible usable and also which is translatable to the humans now coming to the validity of experiment experimental validity is something like the validity of your driving license if your license is not valid policeman will catch you and put you a fine same way there is a way to check the validity of experiment there are two type of validity internal validity external validity internal validity is something where you can establish cause and effect what is that cause and effect in simple term you give paracetamol temperature will go down and you make sure the temperature which is gone down if i have a fever okay 102 i will take paracetamol temperature will go down i have to make sure that my temperature have gone down because of paracetamol not because of the mother uh, this dalia or i have put something uh, cold water on my head or 
anything else on any food or any luxury or by air conditioned room my temperature have gone down because of paracetamol if you can establish that dependent and independent cause and effect way your experiment is internally valid now external valid when you have done experiment on mouse and you have an interesting finding and you say i have discovered drug for the diabetes i have discovered drug for the cancer i have discovered drug for hypertension external validity is that you have done x drug discovery in x species and strain of the animal there are more than 2000 strain of mouse but what is the potential of this translation of this research which you have done mouse in human external validity is if you have done in mouse what are the chance it can be replicated into dogs what are the chance it can be done into humans what are the chance it can be done in other species so internal validity cause and effect external validity when you can translate the same result in another species so it is very very important how can you make sure internal external validity you can make sure internal external validity when you select the real animal model and real animal model does not mean the model which is available in your animal facility or any mouse or any rat internal validity external validity means when you select a model whose physiology and pathology construct validity whose changes are same as like which is are same in humans like i tell you example we are doing a lot of research on diabetes and in mouse but the basic site of glucose clearance in mouse is liver whereas the site of clearance of glucose into the human is skeletal muscle there is a big difference so if we know the difference we can tell oh we have done in mouse but we can so internal validity is maybe high but the external validity below because the site of glucose clearance in two species is different now coming to the history of animal welfare as you know the in our country we treat animal as a god goddess and uh, in my travel all over the world but we the way we treat our animal mostly i'm not saying every one but mostly it is very nice and we treat them well but the first documented history of animal welfare is that when bremble in 1965 published a report on uh, five freedom so people were using animal they were feeding them and then they were butchering them and eating them then some some of people who were slaughtering the animal and by the time the animal reached slaughter house the animal used to be in really bad condition like cattle and buffalo and should not buffalo for cattle so they decided okay we should have a welfare for the animal also and then they found out that it is not only the i told you the bodily control mental control it is not only the bodily feed if you feed them they are growing and they are breeding does not make sure that they are having full welfare so he gave the concept of five freedom the list of five freedom that the freedom from hunger freedom from thirst freedom from injury freedom to express natural behavior but this now freedom this five concept is also becoming outdated and and these all now a welfare is becoming a obligation in relation to causing harm or poor welfare in other animal and the assertion of right and freedom cause problem we sometimes say it is our right own animal but we have also duty that in our uh, constitution article 51 it says that we will treat animal uh, with a compassion so assertion of right is also sometimes cause problem because animal also feel pain and the basic concept that animal feel pain any procedure remember any procedure which cause pain in human also cause pain in animal until unless it is proved otherwise so and another important thing is that sometimes they don't if i have a pain now i will start crawl and then making noise and howl and run and go to the doctor and hospital and get the injection but not necessarily animal express pain in that way most of the time we say researcher they say they want to collect the blood they cut the tail and take some of the blood and say oh they are not making any noise and they are okay they are feeding they are taking food are they not feeling pain they are feeling pain but we don't understand they are pain so history of the welfare is that it started with bremble gave the five freedom and now we have come to the 
going to a point where we can measure welfare. Welfare is something not in the air. Welfare can be measured. How it can be measured? By physiological index indicators of pleasure. Physiological indicators are like your heart rate, your respiration rate, and your skin temperature and all that one. Behavioral indicator of pleasure. Behavioral indicator like if you go to the temple and you sometimes see the animals, uh, elephant are doing head like this means stereotypic behavior, purposeless behavior, doing the same time without any purpose is a stereotypic behavior which is indicator of poor welfare. Extent to which strongly preferred behavior can be shown. Means how they can show their preferential behavior. Sometimes the animal are put in the cage, like shows are put in the shaw crate, and chicken are put into the battery cage, A4 size cage paper, where they cannot express their natural behavior. So, variant of normal behavior shown or suppressed. Extent to which normal physiological process anatomical development are possible because of the housing condition. Extent of behavioral aversion shows, means I told you the stereotypical behavior and biting of some of the bars which are there in their shaw crate and all. Physiological attempt to cope or fail to cope. Sometimes they start biting their own tail and they bite their tail so badly that their tail is gone. Immunosuppressor. They are so much depressed that their immunity is suppressed and they get the disease. Disease is more. Disease prevalence increase in your, in your facility or in your uh, herd. It means the welfare is poor. And also the behavioral pathology, brain changes, bony damage prevalence. You see some, some of the scratch, some of these uh, wounds outside the body, which is indicator of poor welfare. And reduce ability to grow or breed and reduce the life expectancy. So, welfare can be measured physiologically, pathologically, behavioral-wise, and also molecular. If you see the beta I mean, some of the enzymes, which are cortisol, if they are cortisol in, in the human and corticosteroid into the animal, if they are increased, it is a clear sign of the welfare problem. If the pain receptor, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> enzyme P, which is indicator for pain, increase, it is a clear cut sign the animal is pain. So we can very well measure scientifically by different tools that animal is in pain and the welfare is poor. Here you can show the shows which are throughout life, they will be in this show crate and they are biting because they have nothing to do in their whole life. They will be put inseminated from the back by the artificial insemination and you can see the dog which is put into the case which is showing you very least interest. In such case, we can say the welfare is poor. Why should we do welfare? For animal experiment people say that we have so many humans and cows and dogs and on the road. Why should we care about the animal which are there in our case? Because, first of all, you are doing research, you are publishing, and if you are publishing, you are making the basis for the research for other people. Other people make assumption on your data. So if your data is not correct, if your animal is not put in a good welfare, you are giving a wrong basis for other people. Another thing, that if you are doing research not for the animal, sometimes for animal, but most of the time for whom? Humans. If welfare is poor, if the welfare is not taken can care, if the animal model is not right, this is going to come back, come to us. Like I give you an example, TG1419 exam recently, so it was gone in through the mouse, through the monkey and other, other animal, but still it had a very big uh, problem into a fun study where the study was from, from and it's a sponsor was from Portugal, that the humans were at a very serious issue. So it is because of this reason, we are doing research for one, humans, and also animals. Also, because we know, sometimes we don't know, but we know most of the time that animals have the same capability as like we. So I am going to prove this. So why do we welfare? Because we are doing for us. We are doing this data for whom? Human. Now, the concept of anthropocentric view that we are central, we are the best, and what is good for us is also good for animal is not you. Animal have their own world. 
and this is proven by the almost all variability reported in primate can also be found in fish. So fish is as intelligent as the primate. They are the fastest. Sometimes they can evaluate risk fast and also respond very fast, like a blowpipe. Come and sit and immediately go back and fly again because they don't find out. Oh, you know, they are very, very slow in responding. Humans are very slow learning. Number of hereditary five-year-old child cows, sheep, goat, and pig perform less well than the dog, cat, rat, horse, etc., etc. So this is way that when you compare the five-year-old child with other animals, it is not always that humans do the best. They can also discriminate and recognize. If you go to the sheep, I will give you the example in detail how they are judging us by ear position and also by the eye. So they can recognize and also they can discriminate. They are also very innovative. Like if you give a piece of bread to the crow, they will not eat. They will go and put into the seashore, attract the fish and they will take the fish. So they are innovative. They have the idea. They also have the capability of like if you have a group of heifers, means young buffalo calf, and uh, means which have the uh, means which have the potential to go and eat directly. So there is a group of heifer we can go and eat, and there is a group of heifer which have to press the panel, and then they will have access. Generally, people will answer in my classroom when I give this talk that what is will be preferred by heifer. So everybody says that something which they have direct access, but no, if are like when they do something and when they get the food there after. So they go jumping, their heart rate is so they are happy. So they want to do something before they want to have access to the food rather than having direct access to the food. So they they have such capability, feeling and emotions. So in that case. When they have such emotions and capability and feeling, we should treat them well. Like pain, in the pain, dog vocalizes, but sheep don't. If the animal is in pain, I am in pain, dog is in pain, they vocalize, they cry. Sheep, sometimes, even if you cut the part of a sheep, that some surgery is being done, like in the uh, Australia, to cut out the part so that they, they don't attract the fly. But they will never make noise. Though they will express in different way, they will express their their gait will be different. Their cortisol level will be extremely high. Does not mean that a dog which vocalizes feel pain, a sheep which don't vocalize don't feel pain. So feeling same and response may be different. Even if you put sometimes some people who are eating fish, like they think that fish is like a, another vegetable. But do fish feel pain? Yes, they feel pain. How do you prove they feel pain? If you put a acetic acid in the mouth of a trout, trout is a part of sheep, kind of sheep, and they evince the shown the sign of pain. Okay, you put acetic acid in their mouth, they will show the pain sign, and the sign of pain will be gone if you give morphine. Morphine is nothing but painkiller. So it, it means experiment have shown that they feel pain. They also feel guilt, anger and rage like dog. If you if you have a pet dog, you offer some food and you tell dog not to eat this food and you go out of the room. And after coming back, if suppose your dog have taken that food because it's too tasty and you have gone out, when you will come back, <coughs> sorry, when you will come back, you will see that dog is realizing that they have done wrong and they will also feel guilt and anger and their guilt and anger can be how they can be monitored by heart rate and some other parameters. So there is a way to monitor where guilt, anger, emotion, welfare and everything. And welfare is not always same. Welfare is different. So I want to give example like pre parturient just before, just before giving birth, Shaw prefer what most of the time straw. Straw means this raw uh, part of our uh, what we call in our Hindi term is uh, bhusa or turi. But if they give birth, what they like most? They like most food. Before food, before uh, the parturition, they were mostly busy with access to the straw because they need food. So these are the examples that welfare is not always same. And the welfare is gone poor because of our lot of genetic 
modified animals or genetic improvement is happening. Like earlier, you might have seen those who are eating chicken, that earlier broiler used to grow to 2 to 2.5 kg in 12 weeks. Now the same broiler is ready in 30 to 35 days. Okay? And this was just before 30 years. A cow which used to produce only 4,000 200 before in 1957 now is producing is 9000 kg and it is even more also now so the genetic modification which is happening fast growth which is happening is not and not certainly good for animals so welfare is poor in such kind of animal so physiological measurement in relation to behavior take account of behavior in interpreting heart rate how do you measure welfare? So I told you, if you have a sheep in your, this we call in this head, and you see how they react to the different stimuli. You can also read the paper. If you just put them separate, so there is no change in heart rate. If they are standing into a tractor outside, stationary trailer, no change. But if they cannot see visual isolation, they have a problem. So their heart rate increased to plus 20. If they are introduced to new flock, they also have a problem, but problem is solved after 30 minutes. So the heart rate increase. If you introduce to the new flock, then there is a means 30 to 120 minutes for it increase to 30, then become 40. If you transport also, that is a big stress to animal, the heart rate is increased. If a sheep is being approached by a man, their heart rate increased by 50. But if a sheep is approached by a man with a dog, then sheep is really in trouble. Their heart rate increased by 84. So we can say by such physiological parameter that the heart rate is increased, so the welfare is poor and we should take care. By this graph, I want to say that even if we have to kill animal for our experiment, which I am not saying against, but kill in a way so that they don't intensity is less and duration is short. So you have to adopt those parameters, those measures like giving injection of thypentin sodium, which can quickly kill the animal or by putting the animal into the chamber of carbon dioxide so that they don't feel pain and the pain death is painless and also quick. So this is a way that we have to do experiment rather than prolonging the suffering as well as the duration of killing, which is not a good example. Do we all have the same idea of welfare? No. So we have done a study where we were discussing with the student, what do you call the welfare? So mostly the vets and the known vets, this study was done. So when you consider vets, vets particularly consider though, welfare is means they are only when they are healthy. They don't consider it as mental, but mostly other way. When we can ask the physical, whether welfare related to physical availability of food, availability of case, availability of water, then more or less everybody agreed, yes, these things should be available and it is a part of welfare. Welfare is also something naturalness, means you give the natural condition in that way. And many people also say, so there is a variation. Bats can see that if animal is healthy, veterinary doctor, then their welfare is very, very Good. Whereas other people think that yes, welfare is also related to also means your their mental status. So this is the do we all have the same idea? No, we don't have same idea. Why do we need welfare? We have already discussed better welfare equal to better science. Most research papers that simply say something along the lines of animal are housed in standard cage with soft wood bleeders and this blah 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 with no explanation why animals were not provided with anything else. Animal studies most often do not neglect the basic enrichment strategy and hence experiment variability increased due to such negligence. So I give you an example. If you house a dog for your toxicity study, some of you might have seen that dogs are this breed of dog, which is beagle, is being extensively used for. If you put that dog into a condition where they cannot move in the slings, and you take intermittently blood and you also feed the toxicant which is there. If you keep them immobilized into the uh, toxicant in this, your, this slings and another way you let them go outside, have a walk, take a walk, go inside, outside, their parameter is more 
reproducible. Another example that you have two sets of animal where the pet, on the right side where the animal were given feminines. <coughs> Enrichment, so fibrillin 4 is a protein that is excreted by vascular smooth muscle and it is essential for maintaining arterial integrity. Homozygous serpent knockout mice die before birth from the arterial hemorrhages, but heterozygous only appear outwardly normal. So homozygous die, heterozygous survive. Although gaps are present between smooth muscle cell in the water and endolium, also a sign of damage. So the sign of damage, if you are providing with enrichment or without enrichment, is different. So in a control study, I was found that housing of heterozygous fibrillin four mice in large cages with a tunnel and wheel significantly reduced the gap and maintained the integrity of endothelium. So if you are providing them the tunnels, wheels, that is the enrichment. So the you can see the picture on the right side, the gaps have reduced because the environment is enriched. If you don't provide that, the same condition is exaggerated. You can see on the right side, which is marked with the colorful arrows. So as this webinar is about the molecular techniques, so I am saying you are not providing something to the animal is reflected into your molecular aspect that can be visible through the molecular parameter, like I told you, the corticosterone, and also visible through the histopathology, which I've shown in your auto arterial hemorrhages. And this is because and, and the environment factors such as housing condition also affect. So <clears throat> another example is that when you are the second example is when considering the effect of enriched environment or level of hormone leptin on signaling protein known as eicosanoid. Eco and on the pro-inflammatory mediator, COX-2. So these pro-inflammatory mediators, if you are not providing them, the enrichments are more. And more means pro-inflammatory environment is increased, whereas increased inflammatory state, if you give the standard condition, standard condition means no enrichment and no taking care. But this tumor weight was also significantly reduced. Pro-inflammatory goes down. COX-2 positive also goes down if you are providing them housing, enrichment, and welfare. Now coming to the considering animal, what they want and what are we providing. Animal are nocturnal animal. Mouse is a nocturnal animal. Nocturnal animals means they are active in the night. But we are doing experiment most of the time when there is a daylight or there is a light in our animal facility. So it is like you asked me to get up at 2 o'clock in the midnight. Anjali professor asked me to give me the seminar at 2 o'clock and you all people come at 2 o'clock. How much will be the translation? Because that is not my active phase. I will come, I will be down, I will take coffee and tea, but I will not be so natural because that is not my active phase. Same is happening with the animals. They are normally natural and we are doing experiments when there is not their active time. They are highly dependent on smell and scent. They like smell and scent, and if you go to the animal facility and you see, oh, it is smelly. No, it is not smelly. It's, it is there, uh, what you call them, uh, that is like a, for humans, we call it is fog cell rye. Fog is a good scent for uh, us. So same is the fog for animal. So they highly depend they, on the smell. And we should take care that such kind of smell completely not eradicated when we change their case. We should always take some of the bedding and put them in the liquid. They are sensitive to ultrasound. Many of the people think animals are dumb. They don't talk. Not you. I can show you a video. You can take my number and my phone number and just give me a WhatsApp. I will send you a video. They talk to them, but they talk to whom? They talk in the range of voice, ultrasonic range, which we don't understand and which we cannot hear. So, if I am going and only causing problem by giving injections to them, they might be talking to each other and saying, oh, the men have come because they understand this by smell and they will tell us, oh, I have been given injection, now it's your turn. So, these are the parameter like they are the most master digger. Master they want to dig. We cannot provide them all these conditions, what they need into natural environment, but we can provide them some of the condition by tissue enrichment, tissue paper enrichment, or some of the enrichment like wheels and some other things, 
by changing them so that they have something to be done. So they have they have the mental control. They are not feeling bored and they don't have the stereotypic environment. And they are <clears throat> when you handle them, don't handle them by tail because that makes them extremely anxious. Handle them by the cupping, which is a very new technique nowadays to handle. And their most comfortable and temperature is 26 to 30. So what they want, we have to provide them. How do you ask them? If you ask them what do I want, I will tell them I want this. I want dal bati churma and X Y Z. How do you ask animal why they want? Okay, it's not very difficult. How do you read their mind? Just do the preference test. Okay, now what is the preference test? Here you can see the two cases. There is a connection between the two cases. In one case you provide X thing, another case you provide Y thing. So and you will see they will spend most of the time where they like. They will take whatever it is being liked by them. And that is how you can ask them what is liked by them. How can you talk to them? By giving preference test, by giving and correcting two cases, and also by <clears throat> giving different conditions. Like in one case, you put light on, another case, you don't put light. So you can see whether they prefer light or don't prefer light. In one case, you provide enrichment tissue paper, in another case, you provide don't provide enrichment. So you can say, oh, they don't like enrichment or they like enrichment. In that way, you can read their mind, you can ask the question, and you can try to provide the same. So this is what we have already discussed, the preference test, which is being done by connecting the two cases and providing the different case. Another thing that I want to emphasize is the unrelieved pain. Most of the time, we consider animal don't feel pain, which is not true. It is our stupidity that we don't understand their sign of pain. They understand pain, but we don't understand how to interpret the pain. We always think it is as way as like we express the answer, yes, not you. So animal do not understand the source of pain. Why it is important to unrelieve the pain? I have pain now. I may anticipate that I will go to the hospital and by the time I will reach to the hospital, I have suffering till the time, otherwise I will be given injection and my pain will be relieved. But animal cannot do that. They cannot rationalize that it will end soon and their whole life becomes pain. So for, for moral and scientific reasons, one should expect a crucial emphasis on pain control. Whenever you are doing any procedure, you have to control pain. Same pain uh, killer which are used for humans can be also used in animal that you have to ask your veterinarian. But any procedure which causes pain in animal also causes pain in human. Any animal which is showing repetitive behavior is suffering. Animal usually, mouse, how do you know that animal is happy and healthy? How do you know I am happy and healthy? I am now taken bath, clean and neat. But Mouse when 80% of their energy in cleaning themselves. So you will find a spotlessly clean mouse. It means mouse is happy. If you find a mouse in dirty and not very well clean, it means mouse is in pain. Okay. So here you see the example. One animal is in pain. Another animal is not in pain. So besides the scientific benefit, there are other advantages associated with providing enrichment. Giving an animal item also give them additional means of communicating their state, their state of well-being or whether they are suffering. On the right side, you see animal is not in, uh, means interested and it is defecating everywhere. Where on the right side, animal have made proper house, they have made proper nest. And also, he is very alert. He is not alert. He is not showing any interest and just passing time. So, this animal is in pain. This is not in pain. Here you can also see the difference. So, in this way, if the nest is form or nest is not form is also indicator whether the animal is in pain. Here is a very good example. On the right side, you see, you gave some tissue paper. On the right side, you see a lot of the tissue paper is cut into the pieces. It means... He is making his own house. He is happy. You see, animal is not doing anything, not showing any interest. Animal is in pain. So these indicator of nest scoring, burrowing behavior is a clear sign that animal are suffering. Animal is in pain. So you, when you plan your experiment, must take care of all these things. 
pain or no pain. Now comes the question of what the law says. You have to do an experiment and it is by law, it is mandated by law, you have to take ethical approval and after ethical approval you have to start. And by law we are bound to treat animal compassionately as per the I told you in section 51A of the constitution and also prevention of cruelty to animal says we have to always avoid unnecessary suffering. Okay. So when you do experiment, how do you know whether suffering is necessary or unnecessary? So I give you one example. So there was one farmer who was bringing his cattle for slaughtering from X place to Y place. Okay. So what he did, all the cattle were having the horns. So he removed the horns. He chopped off the horns. And he took the cattle to the slaughterhouse. And when they reached to the slaughterhouse, the doctor said, hey, you have caused necessary suffering. Police said, necessary suffering. Doctor said, necessary. He said, farmer said, no, it is not necessary. It is unnecessary suffering. Okay. Then it went to the court. Court asked few questions and that you have to ask these three questions. Farmer said, I have brought these cattle from X place to Y place and I have removed the horns because if you don't remove the horns, they will fight into the truck and they cause injury to them. Hence, it is a good thing I have done. Another thing, earlier I could only pack four cattle, now I can put ten cattle. So it is good for me, profitable for me. So it is good for animal answer. What do you think? So for thinking, you have to ask three questions. Okay, this is the Ford and Village case 8809. If you want, I can also share with you. So basis of animal protection license made up of these three components. Our, uh, compo our prevention of cruelty to animals says unnecessary suffering. Now, question number one, what we have to ask. Did the animal suffer? Yes. If you take out the horns, so top of the horns, animal suffer. It is like cutting our finger. Oh, yes. Was the suffering necessary or it could be avoided? In my sense, you also take, it could be avoided. You can pack less number of animal, it could be avoided. Would a reasonable, competent, reasonable human farmer have told it such a state of suffering? Because in law, if you are not reasonable, if you are mad, if you are proven not mentally sound, you no laws apply on you. Okay? So would a reasonably competent, reasonably human farmer have told it is such a state of fear? No. Okay? So if you are doing experiment in your uh, in your facility, you ask whether animal you cut you cut the tail for taking the fish piece of tissue for tuna typing. Search. Or you take blood from the eyes. Did animal suffer? Yes. Was suffering necessary or unavoidable? Could be avoided. Would a reasonable? How could you avoid? Here is the trick. You could take the blood, but from not the eye, but from the tail. Not from the eye, but from the mandible. From the eye, yes, but with anesthesia. Suffering is avoided. Suffering is, did the animal suffer? No. Why did not suffer? Anesthesia. Suffering could be avoided, could not because you are doing experiment. But it is avoided by anesthesia and analgesia. Would a reasonable competent, reasonable human farmer or human researcher? Yes. Because we are avoiding suffering and suffering is necessary because whatever comes out from the research will be more useful for avoiding suffering to the human. So, the, what we call that, that we have to balance suffering and benefit. Okay? Now, now with this, this use, I think you can do very well your, these things, whether the suffering was necessary, whether necessary, suffering, necessity, and mental elements, mensera, because you, all of you are doing PhD or master, it means you are mentally sound. The farmer is also mentally sound because he is talking about profit. He is also talking about backing the animal. So please do you this formula for your experiment just to say whether it is necessary or necessary. Usually when you are doing experiment on human, 
you ask humans, can I do experiment on you? Now you must be hearing the corona vaccine. To ask volunteer, who can volunteer? So they will volunteer, I will volunteer, I can undergo this agony or the suffering to the humans. But animal cannot because they cannot speak. Who speaks in their behalf? We speak. If you speak on their behalf, because animal cannot speak, you are doing experiment on animal, who is their advocate? It is the researcher who is the advocate who speaks on behalf of animal. Okay? So you must take care of the pain. Pain is not there. So what are the issues in experiments? There is a lot of failure rate. You can see this graph where from preclinical phase 1, phase 2, phase 3 and registration, the success rate is low. So sometimes we are being criticized by the uh, that we are uh, experiment failure is a lot and we are not doing the right experiment. But here there is a point. If you see the preclinical to the phase 1, preclinical to the phase 1, preclinical is done on mouse or anyone and phase 1, phase 2 done in humans. So preclinical to phase 1, there is a hardly a toxicity. Toxicity is very less thanks to the animal. Otherwise, if there is no animal testing, now all this toxicity will go to whom? Us and we will die. Ah, second thing, animal experiment fail, yes, but not animal experiment. Human experiment also fail. You say phase one, phase two, phase three. Here also the star, this, uh, this uh, failure rate is steeply going down. So we have to do experiment correctly. How do you do experiment correctly? You have to choose the right model of your disease. Suppose if you are doing experiment in diabetes, animals are different from us at nucleic acid level, protein level, pathway level, cell level, tissue level, organism level, organ and population environment. They are totally different. And we should aware of the difference. Like I told you, the tissue difference. The glucose clearance in mouse is liver, glucose clearance in human beings skeletal muscle. The receptor and how the how do we eat? We eat breakfast, lunch, dinner. How do animals eat? They always keep on eating. How do the insulin secrete in animal? Totally different from insulin secreted into us. We take breakfast, we take milk, we take something sugary. So a lot of uh, glucose into our stream and there is a secretion of insulin. There is a hyperglycemia, then it comes to the normal level. But no, animals usually keep on eating, keep on eating, keep on eating. So that their secretion of insulin is different from ours. You should know these differences. And then you plan your experiment. So species selection, selection of your animal model for yourself is extremely important. It is most based on your ability. When we sit in the ethics summit, usually people say, it is available in our university, it is cheap, it is breeding very well, it is easy to handle, their breeding cycle is very fast, so I can do it. You have to tell what is my research, what I am researching on. This is the thing and what is this matching into animal model. Okay? Then only you can say your model is correct rather than available. Why most public research findings are false? Another example is that I tell you that biologists are not good in statistics and statisticians are not good in biology. So today's organizer, Professor Anjali, is the professor of physics, I suppose, or I don't know. Um, yeah. But biologist, for a biologist, it is very difficult to understand statistics. I'm a vet. For me, also, statistics is different. So here, the p-value is less than 0 0.005, and significant significance is done. Then does not really indicate the power of your experiment, the producibility of your experiment. So it is important when you do experiment, you should understand the sample size. What do we do sample size? How many animals in a group? Six number of animals in a group. What is the base? I don't know. Usually say, to get statistically significant. No. To collect, to calculate the sample size, please, you have to understand the alpha, beta, signal, and the error, standard error or the variation. If you know the, the all these parameters, then only you can calculate the sample size. If you are doing regulatory experiment, it's okay. What the regulation says, you have to follow. But if you are doing experiment in your lab for something new, you have to calculate sample size. 
if you cannot calculate some two size anything because there is no uh, standard deviation or uh, this data is available you can go for resource equation where the number of animal usually come to 10 in a in a, in a group so do give attention to the sample size so why do we give attention to the sample size in this experiment so there is a systematic review and meta analysis system to know that which way we are going and there is one example i caught which is about the stroke they have 1026 drugs were tested for stroke in animal models and only 374 were found effective in animal model 1026 in and and 300 so it is instead of animal model this is tested on to this uh, cell line but 370 sorry for this correct i mean some mistake 374 founding in effective in animal model and only one drug was found effective in human that was also the new drug that was the repurposed drug so you see the how animal confusing the data are which are published already in the public domain so systematic view and meta analysis if you found if your disease of interest is the best way to see which animal model is correct one more to be selected so at the means i am coming to the last because five minutes only is left when you are in doubt support the animal can we really call ourselves animal carer when we allow mechanization complacency please when you are doing experiment don't say complacency you have to be critical of your experiment discuss in ethics committee discuss in your group and as much as possible if you are very say oh okay, i know you you know me and i you don't criticize that's not a good way so in that way we cannot call ourselves animal carer because we are allowing mechanized and crescency and what is in other context is we are perpetuating nothing but cruelty tradition and status quo is another problem we are always doing in that way we are this department running 600 years or 80 years and we are continuously doing it we don't want to change resistant to change both individually as in the form of issues and inertia all combines to challenge those who ask epidemiological right question so science is changing day by day things are changing and that's why because of this we have a ethics committee it's important to adopt these things another thing the how do you report these animal experiments don't write something which is politically correct like here people are saying great care what do you mean by great care great care means just go and visit animal facility once a day and just provide the feed and water that's great care no great care is not that you have to quantify the great care great care at sn has gone into refining the techniques used to monitor animal response to the treatment using or order to reduce the degree and duration of what is degree and what duration of in suffering in cut to the minimum work with mice cattle is not expected to be greater case than moderate should experienced observer who are experienced observer those who are trained and certified those who are veterinarian the veterinarian who had worked in to animal husbandry for all the life is not experienced in laboratory animal science okay experience means something who is certified and all time monitor clinical sign which clinical sign here you may sound the very good care good words are like humanely what do you by humanely we are all human humanely means you go out and help positively so in this one they have not mentioned what is the intervention what is the frequency what is the duration what is the adverse effect yes they have mentioned severity and also the pain so here the chapter is very good english is very good but it is of no use but small chapter can give you here you can see the first example basis of experiment is surgical closure of the middle cerebellar artery they are they are not saying good care they are saying they are closing what middle cerebral artery what will happen if you close and how you are closing by under anesthesia they were they did not mention anesthesia they said good great care this result in mice a stroke which is manifest what will happen if you do this stroke will happen what will happen in stroke hemiplasia means one side of mice will be paralyzed <coughs> sorry which constitutes the main factor and is classified as medium severity the feed intake is mice may take the feed the observation time is 90% of animal for 24 hours so first 24 hours you are observing 90% means you are there for 24 hours observer who observer experienced observer who is experienced 
certified and after 24 hour 10 percent for next 72 hours so here they have quantified everything they have not used too mainly they have used term anesthesia and analgesia they have given time they have given what will happen they have given what they will do so they have given intervention that is middle cerebral artery frequency 24 hour 72 hour duration they have given adverse effect hemiplasia severity very severe, high severe pain what will happen and this paraplegia of hemiplasia so this is science instead of writing great care humanly this experienced observer they carry no importance you have to quantify this ultimately you have to do the cost and benefit analysis cost is the suffering to the animal what is the cost is suffering to the animal what is the benefit benefit is the research output and which will be helpful for the humans or for the animal cost is suffering who is suffering animal are suffering benefit is to whom any humans when and how so this is a very debatable so we have published several publications and recently also we have published a systematic review all these concepts are given you just go and see, see the pubbed and type our name this is the sample size i already talked about you have to know alpha you have to know beta and you have to also know the signal what is signal signal is something that we are expecting if we are taking suppose we want our drug to be effective for bringing down the temperature temperature means, means fever 102 to 100 so from 102 my paracetamol or my drug will bring down the temperature from 102 to 100 so the signal effect size is what two degree from 102 to 100 in that way and also the noise noise is the intrinsic variability the standard deviation or the variation which is there always we have to find out that so this is somehow you have to calculate the sample size you have to standardize your animal experiment you have to say minimum variation and you have to standardize you have to give same water same feed same bedding same light same animal same animal handler also so environmental condition experimental procedure have to be same and, and this will really help into reduction of bias number of animal needed and also announcement of reproductive result animal welfare and quality of research so the basically we have to amplify by all this procedure we amplify what signal what is signal i told you that what we expect what we expect is that if you are doing research for parasite the temperature bring down or a cancer it will reduce the cancer from this level to this level what is noise noise is that you have a temperature control today tomorrow you don't have a light in animal facility you have feed today from x supplier today you are have from x supplier. today your experiment is done by vj pulsing tomorrow you are fall six and tomorrow you ask your madam anjali that can you do experiment these all things bring noise so if you have a noise and signal equal no statistical significance hence no useful data okay so reduce the noise amplify the signal is our purpose how do you do amplify the signal by doing standardization noise also by standardization signal can be amplified by using animal which is right animal okay so these are the some of the variation which is often more than what we think genetic make up of the animal don't say every white animal is valve animal you have to do the genetic monitoring environmental condition biological effect like infection case density sometime animal is perfectly healthy but they have hepatitis or mycoplasma which is very common in our part of the world so you have to take care of the temperature lighting infection case density humidity noise randomization randomization means not haphazard whatever we do we do in a struggling way so because of the time paucity i cannot cover all these things and also the chemical which may come from the bedding material suppose if a farmer is spraying pesticide onto the we in this rice husk or rice field and you are taking rice husk as a bedding material so this uh, pesticide is coming to your experiment which you may not be aware okay so these things are the most uh, some of the common error which make is the type 2 error where the effect is small variation is large and number of animal used is very small so we may 
sample size is a too few animal is a complete waste, a total waste then. Too many animal is a partial waste. But best is to collect and calculate the sample size. We also have to justify the animal uses with the cost and benefit analysis. You cannot justify just by saying that it is right for my PhD and you have to be always critical what you do and don't believe in status quo. So I hope I have cleared some of these doubts. Animal welfare is different from animal protection. Well, necessary is different from uh, unnecessary. Ethics is different from welfare. So this you can discuss later on because of the paucity of time. And we should focus on systematic view and meta-analysis, specialized animal training, statistics, experimental design, animal welfare, cost and benefit analysis necessary, and uh, intensity and duration of pay. Okay, so at last, I have a message to all of you. Hey, human, be human. This is the photo of my IGIB, where the last time we have, I'm continuously doing two-week training program on laboratory animal science. And Dr. Kumud, he and we, uh, myself, have done several program on National Institute of Valley well Animal Welfare. And throughout the country, cool nook and corner, we have trained the person for to do ethical treatment. This is about my contact detail in case if you need. Uh, you can always contact me. And with this, I would like to thank for the opportunity. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you so much for such a wonderful lecture you delivered today. Uh, you have explained all the basic concepts of animal behavior, animal handling very well. And you addressed different examples, common examples. That was the best part of your presentation. And I hope and I can see as well uh, many good feedback from the participants that all the participants even including me have must have enriched their knowledge they must have been benefited through your lecture so sir uh, can we take a few questions from the yes, participants please. thank you uh, the first question is from mr anurag mathur mm -hmm. what is potential role of animal wildlife welfare in environmental legislation can you come again uh, dr anjali sure sir uh, yeah. What is potential role of animal welfare in environmental legislation? Yeah, animal welfare, I told you, is something what, what is, uh, what was an, an questioner name? Uh, uh, Anurag, Anurag Mathur. Anurag, 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 animal welfare, whatever the animal, either wild animal or domestic animal or whosoever it is, the welfare is something which is the natural need and of the animal what they want if you are keeping animal suppose wild animal keeping into the captivity and breeding and doing some experiment like we see we are seeing so many disease coming from animal i quote example i'm a vet 60 to 70 percent of these viruses and diseases are jumping from whom animal source so their welfare is important our welfare is important Conservation environment is only possible when we maintain the diversity. Nowadays, this is very pertinent question, and I can speak on this a lot. The, we are we are removing the biodiversity and pro, pro, promoting more monoculture, more more laboratory based, which is not really true and which is not really good. And because of this is our means kind of a mechanical thinking that this virus is keeps on jumping from species to species first. Conservation is not possible. So I, I give one example which I have experienced. If you house a monkey for a very long time into a laboratory, and suddenly you feel, no, you let them lose, let them go into the web. Can they survive? No, they cannot survive. Because they have forgot their natural skill to survive into the uh, wildlife. So this welfare is really important for conservation, but the welfare and conservation can only happen when you treat them in the way they are. And for understanding, the understanding that, we have to understand their behavior. And their behavior, first we have to understand that anything which is good for us is not good for them. This is the most central problem we feel. Air condition is good for us and air condition is also good for them. This is good for us and it is good for them. No, that's not true. So we have to really understand and to understand that, I quote you an example of doing preferential test. Understand their mind by ethological test. And I can quote many examples, but this is in short, Dr. Anjali. Thank you, sir. Uh, 
thank you sir thank you for the nice explanation uh, the next question is from mr avinash how can i determine reproductive senescence in female laboratory animal with and without dissection reproductive senescence, senescence in female uh, laboratory animal uh -huh. with and without dissection first of all dissection is not allowed uh, dear friend who so very you are talking about mr avinash so this ah uh, avinash let me very clearly that dissection is no longer allowed now either in the frog or rolling the animal now i told you the first first slide was what is an animal experiment animal experiment which is done for certain purpose dissection is on a purpose so that's no longer allowed if you don't have a purpose and purpose is used to solve some societal problem so if you want to see uh, i did i did not get what he want to ask uh, means dissection is not sure so allowed uh, uh, i think he start. want to know like the reproductive senescence in female laboratory animal uh, if uh -huh. mr avinash is uh, there on meet he can ask the question he can clear out the question senescence i don't know what he is asking means so we can move on the to the next question he can uh, no issue. specify it hmm. later Uh, mr kulbhushan uh, are there hmm. some health disorders by consumption of broiler chickens ha <laughs> this is more a, this is more a question which is i am doing work now in food safety so this is nothing right. to related to welfare but food safety but uh, in this i would like to say if your broiler is grown up with fed with antibiotic okay i told you the broiler earlier used to grow into the same size into the 12 weeks now the broiler is growing into 25 or 30 days they are sometime coming early into the market if your broiler is not safe the food is not safe so i can only say that you have to know the source of your broiler if you are getting broiler from some farmer who are feeding something which is for the growth and which is not good for you of course is not good for you but it has nothing to do with the welfare but it has to related to food safety now broiler are coming with the, you may see some of the advertisement in the newspaper you may be seeing in jaipur also sometime you get uh, antibiotic free chicken or antibiotic free milk right. it means people are becoming aware that antibiotic is given to the animal this antibiotic is coming to us if you will go to the doctor when you will fall sick this antibiotic will naturally not work in you because you are already exposed through milk to those antibiotics okay this is also a big chain then your flora there is a lot of bacteria which are there the normally into our intestine they will be changed so they will not be longer the same so the nut cell is your food is safe when animal food is feed is safe so you ask the question to the farmer from where you are bringing the chicken whether the chicken was fed with antibiotic or not or otherwise tested test means tst test test is for the presence of antibiotic residue right, then sir. already is safe right sir. nice question so uh, one question in the pipeline i also uh, want to raise like when we uh, uh, feed uh, like we use uh, these uh, like the broiler which you were discussing or any vegetable which is off season or which is not mm -hmm. grown in that particular area so when we consume mm -hmm. that so i think uh, the stress related proteins might be present in that organism so when we are consuming those same, same stress related proteins are consumed by us so is it the cause of uh, uh, persisting stress in humans nowadays the raised cause of uh, one of the cause maybe yeah yeah because now we are coming animal to the plant but basically this is a food safety issue again anjali what we propose that we always eat what is local and what is seasonal this is the mantra what we say in food safety rather than bringing something from somewhere because the demand which our body needs is as per the local it adjust is as per exactly. different local condition exactly. so i all we always say in food safety that eat local and also eat seasonal something which is fashionable and very costly is not always good for your health right sir that i only i can yeah. say thank you sir sir we can take two more questions one is from uh, yeah. ms shreya how to determine sample yeah. size uh, yeah 
This is very, very good question, Sreya. And uh, I think because usually when I do, it means not virtual class and real class, I ask students to do it. <laughs> because whenever you go for the animal experiment, usually people say, how many animals? Six number of animals. Ah, uh, what? Why you take six number of animals? They are because we want statistically significant. No, that's not true. Sample size means you have to determine your alpha, which is usually zero point zero five. You have to determine your beta. Beta is the power that your real effect is detected. Your real effect is covered into that, and that usually you take eighty to ninety percent. If you go go and Google and collect the sample size, next is the effect size. Effect size is what you determine your animal experiment. What do you want to do? Suppose if you can see my video, you are discovering a drug for cancer, and you are discovering that cancer size of the tumor is by vernier caliper. You say this is the size, and you determine by this is the five centimeter size. Suppose this is the five centimeter size. I want my drug to reduce from this five centimeter to two centimeter. So effect size is from five to two. So effect size is three centimeter. So you have to determine your effect size, and you also have to find out your variation, standard deviation, or the noise we call in simple terms. Noise can be find out by already published data. So when you have all these things, alpha, beta, effect size, and also the Variation or noise, you can determine your sample size. But it is important to determine the sample size. Don't go for six. And usually we always go for six, which is not correct. And nowadays reviewer are also asking, how did you find out this is your sample size? So you have to, and you have to, and who uh, sir means ask this question. Please go to the Google, write sample size calculation, determine your alpha, beta. Effect size, variation, or noise, then you can easily calculate. And that for that you have to read a lot because for finding variation and noise, you have to read the literature. literature. If you want to detect your effect size, you should already know what is already in the market and what you want to determine. So it's not easy. And that's why people take shortcut and say, right, six. It's easy. Magic number. It's easy, sir. <laughs> so the last it's question easy. it's from uh, Miss Varsha Dikshit. Uh, which model animal is best for diabetic studies? Ah, this is not. Uh, I cannot give the tailor-made answer to this, Varsha. But this is good question, Varsha. For finding out the answer to this, first go and sit with a human doctor. This is my personal suggestion. What they see in human when a diabetes patient go to a human doctor, what they will see. They will see glucose, and they also will see the glycosylated hemoglobin nowadays, which is indicator for diabetic syndrome. If you find these two things together, you can say the model is correct. First, second thing that when you are selecting a model, you don't have to select based on what is available in your university or your college. No, you have to understand what is happening in humans. What is happening into animals? Second thing, how diabetes is happening in humans? Not by giving streptozotocin injection. That is type one diabetes because you have destroyed beta cell. No, that's not good model. How diabetes is happening in humans? We eat a lot. We eat a lot. We don't do anything. We become docile, and usually by the age of 40, 45, we are obese. We are have blood pressure, having hypertension. We have other syndrome, and ultimately become a model for with metabolic syndrome, and we also have a diabetes. Try to have same situation in mouse. Feed them mouse high fat diet. Create them obese so that also they become a diabetes in a natural way. Rather than giving streptozotocin injection, which destroys the beta cell and which is a model for hypoglycemia, but not a model for diabetes. But not a tailor-made answer for any question. You have to read and read, read a lot. Right. This is what I can suggest you for diabetes. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your. suggestions and sorting out the queries raised by the participants uh, may i request uh, professor pj john sir if he is uh, there on meet to address uh, the participants and our speaker as well dr pj john he is head department of zoology university of rajasthan great sir 
सर आर यू कैन यू हियर मी सर आर यू अवेलेबल ओके आई एम सॉरी आई थिंक आई कैन नो ही इज आई कैन सी हिम बट ही इज पुट दिस स्पीकर नॉट ऑफ स्पीच इज ऑफ हां ही इज यू आस्क हिम टू म्यूट म्यूट मोड म्यूट मोड राइट सर सर आई कैन सी जॉन प्ले या डॉक्टर जॉन इज देयर बट ही इज स्पीकिंग बट इज इन म्यूट मोड अच्छा ही स्पीकिंग बट ही सर ही स्पीकिंग ओके ओके सर यू कैन कॉल हिम बाय हां एग्जैक्टली थैंक यू सर सर आई एम जस्ट ओके सर हिज वी आर अनेबल टू कनेक्ट टू हिम एनीवे सर हेलो यस सर या या वी कैन हेलो यस सर यस सर सर आई हेलो हेलो यस सर वी कैन हियर यू sir thank you for your kind words uh, you also know that it won't be possible without your support and encouragement to conduct this webinar uh, thank you sir dr vijaypal singh sir uh, once again i would like to thank you to deliver such an informative lecture uh, sir you can uh, drop oh. the call from your side yeah i would like to thank uh, kumud also because uh, we have worked together a lot and he is my good friend i don't know whether he can hear me or not so he is a very we have developed so many good modules so thank you very much anjali for giving me the opportunity and i just would like to say i'm always available and without cost even i can pay you we are we are doing all this uh, conferences courses all over the world not okay. india okay. like we have done 
world involved like in uh, malaysia okay. vietnam sri lanka so we can plan yeah, something so we will discuss it over it. we will discuss over it yeah. certainly shortly thank you okay thank you namaste. sir it was our pleasure it was our pleasure sir thank namaste. you sir thank you namaste, namaste. Sir. namaste. dear participants so this was the last lecture of this webinar uh, i thank you all i thank you all very much for joining this webinar i tried at my end to connect with you to bring the experts from different areas i was able uh, to bring experts from plant molecular biology from animal field uh, and i know from your feedback from your comments that uh, your knowledge might have been updated and enhanced with the topic i thank you to those also who could be benefited and appreciated our efforts in this difficult time you know we had limited resources there was uh, initially there was internet issue we had some problems during quiz preparation we need time there was a uh, number constraint to incorporate people on meet so we try to resolve these issues each day uh, even like it was my first experience our team conducted this sort kind of webinar for the first time and uh, we are also in the learning phase and we were also able to learn many new things great experience uh, i would like to uh, give a big thanks to our critics you know uh, without whom help it was not able to we won't have been improved our deliveries uh, to you and uh, one thing i want to say regarding certificates this was the highest rated query in each and every session about the queries and post session as well like now i would uh, request you to give some time to us a week time and then uh, we will send you certificates e certificates on your email after we meet since we have to uh, resolve certain uh, issues like uh, each day on meet and on youtube we have around 200 participants like today also we have uh, 210 participants but at the end of a quiz session the responses which we get they are around 280 to 290 and we find uh, email addresses like abc@gmail.com papa@gmail.com in the response box so i don't know like they are not the registered candidates of course <laughs> and you know we are yeah. able to identify those persons as well but uh, it's not good to expose their name here so our intentions for like uh, good to learn yes i think uh, to get a certificate must be a secondary thing as compared to get knowledge so uh, once again i would like to thank you all and uh, the link will be shared shortly on meet as well as on youtube and let's hope that this difficult time it ends soon and we all get get back to normal life again and uh, i would ask you all to stay home stay safe and learn online these days thank you